Ahoy hoy, fellow foodies! I'd like to do things in a little opposite order to my name today. I want to talk about all the foodie stuff. Then I want to discuss the fandom stuff. I went to Seattle during Emerald City Comic Con, but because I bought soccer con tickets, I couldn't afford to do both. So I was seeing what Seattle was like on a Comic Con day. But enough about that. Off to dinner. Passing by the convention advertisements posted outside of local shops and businesses. I got a good look at what I hadn't seen in years. I remember getting some of my best cityscapes from Plymouth Pillars Park. It was a fun little inside secret kind of place for cosplay shoots. Back in college, I wanted to do Soul Eater cosplay photo shoots and gatherings at Plymouth, then come together at the Rumba Cafe. The name reminded me of Rumba Coffee from the first Soul Eater anime. Oh well, and nearby, the Roastery Reserve in Seattle. I tried to cover it when it was new. The second of two of these at the time, but that got lost in a shuffle. It's definitely an institution now. As for my actual meal, I was treated to Little Woody's Burgers. I had a custom burger, batter fried onion rings, and a blood orange kombucha. I figured I'd have preferred the jasmine green tea option, but I didn't want more caffeine. After tasting the blood orange flavor, I'm sure I would have preferred the tea. The fries I shared tasted more like smoke than potato, but the rings held up well. The burger tasted grass-fed as advertised, and while I enjoyed myself here, it was cramped. Most of the seats needed to be on the second floor. I cannot recommend this experience for claustrophobes, because it's a Seattle kind of cramped. Most places don't have a lot of space to lease for businesses. There's so much packed so close together. And I passed it once when I was trying to find it because I was looking where I was going and counted on, on a protruding sign overlapping with my path. Pro tip, their sign is on their window. Coming back down the hill and getting back to the convention center, there was a new Jiro restaurant, a remaining Taco Del Mar, and still nothing where Moby's used to be. But this is the finest place as any to transition to the cosplay. Starting in the same lobby, with Gur, I've caught so many Gur cosplays, so many cons over the years, I was speculating whether it's bad luck not to photograph at least one per con. Little Guy became an institution all his own. And now a Lady Dimitrescu. Then we'll jump to Lust from Full Metal Alchemist. I told her about the couple's photo I took of a Lust cosplayer reenacting a famous scene with her personal Gene Havoc cosplayer. Surely I've got that around here somewhere. Here's Pathfinder cosplay as Ladna from Critical Role. Check her Instagram. I'm not sure who's wearing Bloom here. Shout out in the comments. Another shout-out if you see your own cosplay. And after a couple more, yes, that is what I wear to carry my lunches these days. I've stepped out and lucked into an Ogon Bat. Speaking of good luck earlier... 
also known as Phantom Man overseas, the Bat predates superhero comics, first appearing in 1931 in Kamishibai, or Paper Theater in the Park. He later transitioned into manga and from there appeared in multiple anime productions. I alluded to this with the cosplayer. But in lieu of all these terms I looked up later, I remembered that the performance is ended in free candy. How very like me to remember the free candy. And he certainly liked that detail too. If you're watching this, I hope I was illuminating more links in the description. I did miss an excellent Jinx cosplayer because she was still transporting her lunch. But I caught so many quality costumes on the outside. Starting with this kilted Captain America. Jumping straight ahead to the Mandalorians. Longtime followers of mine may remember another prominent Mandalorian cosplay photo. But no recycling bins here on these particular street corners. And here we have Mara Jade. I was first introduced to the character by another Comic-Con cosplayer somewhat years back. One thing I appreciate about convention photography... It's a good first introduction to what fine things I might have otherwise missed. Of course, there were other Star Wars cosplays there. It segues nicely into a Starfire cosplay. I was reminded of my first SummerCon. One of the back issues on markup there was the eight-issue Starfire miniseries from the 70s. Someone else used that name once or twice, and as soon as Princess Coriandar of Tamaran showed up, Starfire number one was almost never referenced again. Seems hobbits have a taste for fashion. Wrapping things up on a funnier note, I know Skathak from Fate was never writer class, but I see this sign and this cosplay at the same time. Couldn't pass it up. And please don't pass up commenting, liking, sharing, and all the rest. The Arch Building usually had a lot of Metro King County bus route maps. Depending on how close you want to get to which building, there's a lot of ways to get off within a few blocks. And that's still not counting the train. Among the multiple points it can reach in town, the International District where I've covered Chinese New Year. Also, UW Husky Stadium. And there's a lot of local businesses to engage in. Some of whom host tie-in events for convention goers. Not this one. I just like their sign. And they were right next to stairs heading up to the Arch Building. And while you're here, don't forget what else there is to see in Seattle coming up. Act Theater by the old Arch Building, and the Paramount by the new Summit Building, and the Fifth Avenue Theater, just a few blocks away, all have things between now, Soccer Con, and some time beyond that. Remember what I said about things being so close together in this town? Also between now and SEC, St. Patty's Day! Skahak is not the only Lancer class from Irish mythology, just saying. Remember when V for Vendetta was released on 317? And coming back to ACT, they're having a party next month. On that note, until next time.